I'm gonna. I'd like to welcome you, Charles. Thank you so much again for coming to spend some time with us and celebrate the life of Narina Machabelli, Baba's wonderful Narina. So I'm gonna turn it over to you and say thanks again, Jay Baba. Thank you. Um, now, here again, I'm gonna start this uh, with a glitch. So I'm trying to use my cursor and I can't. I wanna say got it for the screen share. How do I do that? Huh. I have to um, my, my PowerPoint, maybe I do. I'm going to do that. That's there. what I was going to say. Yeah, end it and just come back okay. in. All right. Now I I know that move in case I have to in case I have to use my curse or cursor again. <laughs> One or the other. Well, I'm I'm happy to be with you today, Ed, and and uh, remembrance of uh, Princess Norina Machabelli. Um, and today I thought, since there's so much to talk about with Narina as, uh, her life was full of different chapters and, uh, and just a great deal of work for Baba in many different arenas. So today I thought that it would be best to just focus on one part, but perhaps the most important part, and that is her work in the founding of Meher Spiritual Center. Uh, some of you know some of that story and some of you may not, but uh, today I'm going to introduce that chapter and draw on some of the papers and thought transmissions that have not yet been published to give a, a, a picture of, of her work at the center. <clears throat> well, I think most of you know that in 1941, uh, Baba sent Princess uh, Norina Machabelli, Elizabeth Chapin Patterson, and Countess Nadine Tolstoy back to the United States, where they uh, had been living in his ashram from India, where they had been living in his ashram for about five years. <clears throat> Baba directed them to collaborate together and spread his message of love and truth in America. Um, but Elizabeth and Norina were specifically tasked with finding and establishing a home for Baba in the West, a universal center that would be what Baba described as an abode for one and all. Um, not long after her return to America, Baba, uh, Narina began to work for Mayor Baba through a method she called thought order or thought transmission. <clears throat> And uh, according to her own explanation of this phenomenon, most of you are familiar with this, Narina would receive direct messages from Baba internally and then spoke them aloud or, re or recorded them on paper. And so throughout the 1940s, Norina gave numerous public lectures in this manner. In the late 1940s, she compiled two collections of thought order uh, Fragments from a Spiritual Diary and 40 Messages from Mayor Baba, which were published in 1949. And Christopher and I republished them in our book, Narina's Gift, uh, more recently. But what remains unpublished um, are, are additional thought transmissions delivered to individuals and small groups on an almost daily basis throughout the 1940s. Many of these messages were intended as personal guidance to people connected to Mayor Baba's work in America, especially the small circle of his followers involved in helping Norina and Elizabeth with the creation of the center. Uh, I like this. Um, there are various advertisements for her different lectures, but this is one of my very favorites <laughs> because I love the title, The God Man Can what no man can. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great title. Um, and this was, of course, at Carnegie Hall in New York. Uh, a number of these lectures were in their studio apartment where, I mean, they're, they're, where they lived, the three of them lived together. Um, then there were some lectures given in hotels in New York. And then there were others given around the country in San Francisco, Seattle, and, di and different places. Um, so Norina understood 
her own understanding of her thought order was that it was a part of the awakening of consciousness that Baba as the avatar had come to bring about in all living things. And her understanding of the role of thought order was inspired by a message Baba gave in 1941 about the breaking of his silence. Uh, and this is her copy of that message uh, that she kept in her papers very carefully. She always kept this in her papers very carefully. I will speak on the 1st of August, 1941, the divine word to myself and in myself, the word of the will of God that will begin the resurrection of the dead world and start the general adjustment of the world. And this speaking to myself operation will continue to the 1st of February, 1942, the day that I will publicly and universally speak, the day that my world manifestation will come to full expression, the day that the six months self-speaking operation will bring about the subsequent unfoldment of the spiritual revival, and the day the disciples of my circle will realize the truth. My present seclusion will continue to April 15th, but from April 15th, 1941 to February 15th, 1942, my seclusion will be more absolute. And well, of course, as with many of Baba's statements about the breaking of his silence, we, we can't fully fathom the meaning of this 1941 message, and I'm not going to try. Baba would speak about his universal work, as you know, and sometimes in what he called my language that he said was beyond our understanding. And during the 44 years of silence, Baba would frequently set dates for the breaking of his silence that would come and go without, as far as, as we can discern, Baba speaking the divine word. For Narina, however, this enigmatic 1941 statement from Baba provided a key to understanding her work of thought order. Now, she kept this copy of Baba's message in a folder that also contained announcements of her lectures and typed explanations of the thought order, thought transmission or thought order process, which shows you how she made the connection between this statement and the work that she did through thought transmission. Thought transmission and thought order I use interchangeably because she did. So there are two expressions for the same phenomenon uh, of, of thought order. So in 1949, or July 1949, <clears throat> uh, after years of giving thought order messages through the 1940s, Narina returned to this 1941 statement from Baba when she inscribed a copy of the newly printed fragments for Elizabeth, whom she affectionately addressed often as Bettina or Tina. So this is in July 1949. And in the book itself, and in the inscription is in the book itself. Baba said in 1941, I shall speak through myself to myself. This booklet makes it clear to my beloved sister self, Tina. So there you have it. That's how she saw the meaning of Baba's message, at least in her work. Now, in her various explanations of thought order over the years, Narina would sometimes refer to Mayor Baba's promise to bring about the dawning of the age of intuition, as described by Baba in the discourses. Avataric periods are like the springtide of creation, Baba says. They bring a new release of power, a new awakening of consciousness, a new experience of life, not merely for a few, but for all qualities of energy and awareness, which had been used and enjoyed on, by only a few advanced souls, are made available to all humanity. Life as a whole is stepped up to a higher level of consciousness, is geared to a new rate of energy. The transition from sensation to reason was one such step. The transition from reason to intuition will be another. <clears throat> In her introduction to Fragments, Narina explicitly links the coming age of intuition to her work of thought transmission. 
And this is, uh, uh, this is from her. Without having to struggle fanatically on my part, the operation of my limited intellect was shut off. And I sensed the direct influx of his spiritual thought order, which I used in America for my work for him. It is difficult to guess when a general transition from reason to intuition will take place in humanity on a larger scale, but there is no doubt that it is taking place in the more sensitive individuals everywhere. The speeding up of the process in me is a striking example of the uniqueness of the avataric awakening. It seems clear then that Norena understood thought order as a harbinger of the new age inaugurated by the coming of the avatar. At the same time, she did not view her particular method of inner communication from Baba as being available to others. We know from her papers that a few people in her circle did aspire to emulate thought order. They wanted to be uh, vehicles of thought order. But Norena repeatedly underscored that only she was authorized to give thought transmission messages. In fact, a number of thought transmission messages uh, that she took to be directly from Baba explicitly said that, that only, only she was to, to uh, do this particular work, um, which was hard for some people. There were a number of people who, as I say, aspired to, to do this themselves. So now to the center of Myrtle Beach uh, that you all know so well, and uh, you've probably seen this map, uh, Wendy and Buzz have a, a large copy of it in, in their home. Um, this is a, 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 another copy of it, or it's, it's original, but she, Dor Doris, Dolores Shaw, who made these, um, uh, made more than one, made a couple. Uh, by the way, uh, what you're looking at is through thought transmission. That is to say, the guidance for doing this and putting all the figures and the you know, all the little uh, titles of places were a part of, uh, of, of, of thought transmission. They were not Dolores Shaw's ideas, they, but she just executed it. Um, but even before Simeon Chapin, Elizabeth's father, deeded the land from Mayor Spiritual Center to Elizabeth in spring 1944, Norena began giving thought order messages about plans to develop the property. In January 23, 1944, for example, Norena conveyed the following thought transmission. This project of mine down south, where is the old civilization of the United States of America, has to give love to all, and love is selfless indifference to all that is profit-making. Again, that's thought transmission. Baba speaking, she believed, through her. Soon, Norena was delivering thought transmission messages with a detailed vision of how Mayor Center should be developed. Some thought order was written down by Norena and then typed by someone in New York or Myrtle Beach, depending on where Norena was staying. Many other messages were spoken aloud and recorded by various people, including Nadine Tolstoy, Phyllis Frederick, Darwin Shaw, Frank Eaton. Phyllis would later put much of the thought order in scrapbooks. Some pages in the handwriting of Nadine or Norena and other pages were typed. Copies of the many of the daily messages were disseminated to the circle of people involved with Norena's work in, in, uh, in New York or Myrtle Beach depending on where Norena was living. So this was every day, pretty much every day. And, uh, and then later put in scrapbooks that we still have. And people would be given copies. So there are people who accumulated a, uh, a whole you know, series of thought order copies that were because they were part of the group. Again, rather New York or Myrtle Beach. They, so they had their own. And as far as we can tell, all of them, and this was not a huge circle, but all of them took these messages to be Baba speaking directly. So these were the only way in which 
pretty much they had communication or they felt with with mayor baba and it extended by uh to people not just who were helping at the center um but other people who had heard about baba and wanted to come regularly to their apartment in new york to hear uh, thought transmission messages from Norena to hear talks, and um, uh, and that was done on a weekly basis. Uh, and then there would be a few other people in different places who would get thought transmission orders from Baba um, through Norena. Uh, Rabia Martin, for example, um, after hearing uh, what she took to be Baba speaking, through Norena in a lecture, and after coming to Baba, Robbie Martin would get messages from Baba through Norena about her health, about what she was to do, and so forth. So her her life and the life of others in Norena's contact was shaped by thought order. Again, not a huge group, not everyone who loved Baba, but I think it's fair to say everyone in America who had a connection with Baba was very much impacted by this because naturally it had ripple effects. If, if you know, Baba was giving messages or there were lots of people who thought Baba was giving direct messages through thought order, it affected just about everybody in one way or another. Over, a, <clears throat> excuse me, over a period of uh, months in 1944, Norena's thought transmission outlined a variety of directives and schemes for land use at the center. Modeled, it would appear on the plans Baba gave in India for projected centers in Bangalore and elsewhere. Um, and so that's when uh, uh, Dolores was given a thought order uh, directive to, uh, to illustrate these plans that showed a, a future hospital for the mentally afflicted, future academy, uh, future huts for artists, uh, the future hospital for everybody, a future nursery for children, as well as guest house, Baba's hut, and the barn that would be those that would be built in the near term. Some of the thought order directives gave detailed instruction for the construction of, of uh, instruction for the construction of future buildings. In February 1944, for example, Narina conveyed a thought order. Uh, with a description of an abode for the saints that she believed would one day exist at the center. And, and here is the description, uh, the thought order description that uh, again is, is in, given in Baba's voice through Narina. At least that was their understanding. <clears throat> Be sure to reserve the biggest lake that is, have, has the best vegetation around and imagine when you're considering the land on the spot how far it could be made ideal for the abode of the saints within the center, my own ideal hut. The amount of holy men which I intend to import to the United States will be no less than 200 or 300, which means saints, yogis, sadhus, and ideal sannasins, who uh, each of these will need their individual hut, which does not need to be more than what you would call a bathing cabin wherein a person can stretch the body flat on the floor and stand erect. No windows, but upper ventilation and a door with screen. Best would be to use the timber that will be available from those 450 acres. So you see, it was, these orders were quite specific and there are hundreds of them. So I'm just giving, <laughs> I'm giving you a sample of, of these. They came from her almost, as I say, almost every day. Um, well, as the center progressed, the thought order messages concerning the center became increasingly frequent. In September 1945, at the height of development of the center, those in Myrtle Beach, at, and they were, it shifted a little bit each time, but these were the core people there at this time. Nadine was there. She wasn't there that often because her health was was bad, so this was unusual. Norena was there, Elizabeth, Mildred Kyle, um, who did a lot of recording of thought transmission. Adele Walken, Dolores Shaw, uh, Darwin's sister, Phyllis Frederick, Frank Eaton, Darwin Shaw, John Bass, David Brook. I don't know much about David Brook, but he was there. And then he had a companion, a girlfriend, I guess, named Twinkie. 
So those were the folks that were there at that time. And as you can see from, from this thought order and this little picture of the center at the time, you can see the group vaguely. This, the, the, the quality of these photographs is, is rather poor, but you can, you can get the idea. There's the moss on the trees, and then you can see the people there. Um, but, you know, so this is how specific sometimes it would get. And they were staying, Elizabeth and Norina and, and Nadine and Yupon Dune. So that's hence the stationary. And this is uh, the cutting trail uh, 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 instruction that Baba gave. Uh, water everywhere. Kitchen, more attention. Note for summer cooking uh, should follow Eastern needs if they are same to be practiced, if they are same to be practiced. Beds, tables, chairs, wash basins, water in every hut, electricity in every building, none outside. Use lanterns outside. Phone near highway, community kitchen for feasts, abstain from planning ahead, calculate rather prefabricated houses needed, if so, where and what and size. Elizabeth's expenses should be cut down. Query, are we permitted to suggest economies? <laughs> 11, extension of garden and lawn. And 12, fence around these four acres. Now, the, re the <laughs> When you see 10 and you think, well, wait a minute, if this is a directive straight from Baba uh, through Narina, uh, why would she be, uh, he or she be tiptoeing around Elizabeth? <laughs> Are we permitted to suggest economies? And so this is an indication of what I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in a minute of the tensions early on between Elizabeth and Narina about these thought transmissions. So, uh, Norina was always on Elizabeth about you're spending too much money, you're spending money in ways that aren't necessary. And of course, Elizabeth was always about this is what needs to be done and this is what I think Baba wants. So you, in a sense, had had Baba's directives coming from two different directions, <laughs> from two different people. And I, so I, I just think this gives you a little bit of a flavor of that of that tension uh, early early in the uh, in the process. Um, uh, as you can see here, um, well, you can't see very well, but this is, they made these uh, spot for the holy men huts. Uh, you know, they dedicated this spot. And uh, apparently, and I think this is according to thought transmission, Pleader, one of Baba's disciples, was supposed to have stood here and physical form at some time. And whatever that means, we're not sure. Baba's name is spelt out in pine cones and shells, right? Um, and up the top, you see, you know, references to the people who were there, best I can, E. Boinkin, I'm not sure. I have to look up who she is. Maybe Christopher knows. Rabia, uh, then you have Norina, you have uh, Darwin, you have uh, Ruth Shaw, uh, you have um, Dolores Shaw, Anna, who was actually brought down to be kind of a helper servant from New York. She was not connected with Baba directly, exactly, but um, she was she was a lovely person. Apparently, Norina was very fond of her, so Norina had her come down and cook for everybody, and she became very devoted to Baba. Um, so. Uh, here you see uh, another fuzzy picture of them dedicating the, what they call the Children's Center uh, in May of 1945. 1945 was a major year for, for developing the center. <clears throat> and uh, Mrs. March, whoever that is, we're not sure, Phyllis Frederick, Bubble Chen, well, I don't know much about her. <laughs> Some of these people appear briefly in and out you know they're visitors uh, from different places so um i mean some there may be some more record of some of these people somewhere that i haven't found yet and then and then uh norena but you can see they're holding a garland and they are dedicating uh this spot um this is uh, uh a sort of a group shot of them uh, obviously on Long Lake, um, and here Consuelo, and I didn't meet Consuelo uh, when I was a child living in New York, Consuelo Sedez, 
a long time connected with Baba. So she was there, Dolores was there. Munns was an old friend of Elizabeth's, she was there. Again, March, Rabia Martin was there during this time. Uh, and of course, Narina, Phyllis, Anna, Anna, Anna Frank. Um, and this is a giant live oak that someone claims that they think they found it um, near, I think it's near, they, they say near the farm shed, but I'm not sure that's, we, we can't confirm exactly, but anyway, it looks like it. <clears throat> and they called this the Yumpazni Maharaj tree. As far as I know, these are the only photographs that exist of the center at that time. And I cannot tell you exactly who took them. Um, I don't think it was Elizabeth, even though she was photographer. But after she left India in 1941, I don't think Elizabeth picked up her camera again, even when Baba was at the center. You know, she was constantly photographing Baba when she lived in India. But I think she put that chapter behind her. And the reason I don't think that she did these, and I could be mistaken about that. Um, I don't think we know. It could be Darwin who took a lot of photos later. And so he might have been starting up taking photos then. But the point being that uh, if Elizabeth had taken them, they wouldn't be poor quality. <laughs> You know, she she had a good camera and she she was very careful about photographs. So um, but I so I can't say. But anyway, I'm glad we have some of these images, even though they are. Uh, you know, limited in, in what you can see now, I thought I'd give a flavor of at least an example. Of. Um, other thought transmission messages Norena gave that were not about the daily work of the center. Many of them were, this is what you do in the morning. This is when you meditate. This is when you weed the garden. This is when you plant flowers. You can only plant so many, these white flowers, not these other flowers, so on and so on. And so painfully detailed uh, instructions. And apparently the people around her, not Elizabeth, Elizabeth was rarely is rarely mentioned in these instructions. So these were to people like Darwin and Frank and Phyllis, you know, this is what you're to do. And uh, it's like a daily, uh, daily instruction when Norena was around to give them. Um, but in addition to that, Norena would also give <clears throat> spiritual discourses from Baba. At least that's how she took it. And um, uh, and so that would also be part of what they would do. They would gather and, and she would give that. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of one of them just to give you a flavor. There are many, many of these. So it's entitled Baba's Message. The threefold movement that man has to personify within is to be of service to all who come to this natural center, the abode for one and all. Man is not able to render service until he is devoted to the ideal of life. The ideal of life is to be of use to all and everyone. The ideal of life is spiritual and impersonal. Man cannot be ideal in function until he is idealizing in himself the self that is the divine order of good. Good is to be of use to all and every other one. Good is to serve, help, be selfless. Good is to live for one another. Good is to make others free of the bondage of the self. The real existence, which is of the head, is to be realized as being unreal by feeling the real and the true state of the self-contented heart that is selflessly contributing to all and every one the highest order of, the, of thought and the purest feeling that is spontaneously creative towards one and all. To live is to be alive within and spontaneously creative in all pure thought reaction. God 
is to be in the heart alive and selflessly creative in the self that is in its pure essence, the life of the human self that is liberated. God is more than any other manifestation in this world. God is life as it is. God is one all feeling that is one all giving to all and every human being creature in this earth. God is open to the spontaneous love order within. It is order. It is spontaneous realized experience of love for one another. Give love, give God in being selflessly spontaneous in feeling love for one another. Love and love and love three times in all one realized experience. Myrtle Beach, November 26, 1945. So that's the flavor of, of uh, the messages she would give. And she would, and they would be written down by someone and then later typed up and, and duplicated. <clears throat> Um, now, uh, I'm just, just make sure I want to, I don't want to skip something here. Yeah. So we know from, um, All right, I, did, I, I see what I did. Um, so we know um, from the various scrapbooks and all the things recorded, we know that side of the stories that happened, obviously. We don't have materials from these other folks, but we have them as they were recorded by Phyllis Frederick or someone else and, and preserved from the side of the thought transmission. Um, but the use of thought tra transmission was not without conflict or controversy, even in this circle of people. So David Brooks, I mentioned, we don't know much about David Brooks. He disappears, but he was given thought transmission from Norena that castigated him for not marrying his girlfriend, Twinkie. And we don't know the full story, but from the record we have, it appears that this conflict led to the departure of David and Twinkie. Um, and they're pretty harsh thought transmissions. They are, they're very pointed and, and they don't give him much room for compromise. And at one point, Samuel Lewis, <clears throat> who was also helping at the center, began giving his own thought order a practice, is, a practice that, you know, as I've said, Norena's thought order prohibits. Um, and because of this tension, Samuel Lewis eventually departed from the circle surrounding Norena. Um, as I remember, he went to the Sufis for a while. Uh, and then eventually Samuel Lewis sets up as a, as a kind of a spiritual guru in New York and develops a following of his own. Um, so he has a, a, a another story that goes on. So it from time to time, uh, it's not surprising then that Norena would ask everybody to reaffirm their commitment to follow the thought order and uh, and that they are true and so forth. Um, uh, and this happened a couple of times. This was an early one in 1944, and then we have another example in 1946. I declare that I will follow Mayor Baba's spiritual guidance and that I will no more criticize or oppose the knowledge that is given to me through these discourses. This essentially means I'm going to keep accepting the thought order as being from Baba. Interesting enough, Elizabeth signed this. Um, so, you know, Elizabeth walked a fine line. I mean, she wanted to support Narina. She she believed that Baba had given her this work. She thought that there were great inspirations coming from, from this. Um, and to the extent it was practical, she was fine with people following it to the letter, 
you know, in terms of what they did every day and so forth. As far as I know, she didn't object to that. She was a big picture person. She was dealing with the money and with buying things and cabins and so forth. And she left all that other part to what flowers to plant and what roads to open up and, and you know not roads because she would do that too but paths to thought transmission so you see there's a kind of a division of labor but anyway what i'm saying is that that elizabeth you know was supportive if not totally on board and she was not the subject of thought transmission i mean she was rarely given instructions um in the way that the others were. So here are some of the people. We won't go through them all. I, we know some of these people, and we don't know some others of these people. Agnes Bourne, we know, was there in 52 when Bob was at the center. Um, and we know, of course, the Shaw family. Uh, and Frank Eaton became an early caretaker of the center. And of course, John Bass was a, a key person in the New York Baba group for many, many years. Kay Eaton was at that time married to Frank. He later remarried after a divorce. You see Norena's signature, Nadine, to Elizabeth's, um, and so forth um, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the list. Um, so a little bit more then about Elizabeth and thought order and thought transmission, because it's a, a very interesting dynamic. <clears throat> and as with everything with Baba, you know, he's as you know well, Baba, this is how he works. He works through these tensions, these relationships, um, and there couldn't have been two closer people, you know, than Elizabeth and Norena. They were deep friends since both meeting Baba in 1931. They traveled together. They went camping together around the United States. Uh, and of course, they looked for the center together at Baba's instruction. Here they are at the center, and this is probably now late 40s, early 50s. Um, and, you know, obviously very, very close. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> so Baba worked through them and the very closeness allowed for there to be deep disagreement and still survive, you know, their relationship to survive. I, that's how I would put it. Um, you, you can only, only if you are dealing with your soulmate could you go through all the stuff they went through and still be close and that's what and that's what happened so they had very different roles as i mentioned so elizabeth it was her money right uh, her family money and so she was in charge of the finances and uh you know she after her her father died just after deeding the land and if she had waited any longer or he had waited any longer to deed the land it probably would not have happened but after her father died, she sold his business and she gave it all to Baba, the foundry. Uh, mo most of it went directly to Baba's work, um, either here or in India. Uh, but she used that money to clear the land, to build buildings, to hire contractors as needed. And Norena, meanwhile, directed the day-to-day -day activities of all those folks who that had come to help. Uh, through she directed them through thought transmission, of course. <clears throat> um, Norena never, well, I shouldn't say never, but I mean, Norena was not giving instructions to people on her own in her her mind. You know, it was always thought transmission. <clears throat> so they would consult with each other about making these decisions, big and small decisions. But it was apparent that Elizabeth uh, would frequently draw the line on some of these ideas. Now, you've already heard some of the ideas that came through thought transmission that, you know, uh, seem, seem impractical or, or bigger than life, or maybe that's for another time. We don't know. But Elizabeth drew the line <laughs> at, that, at that time because they were, they were things that, that, that were not a practical in her view. Um, and they weren't consistent with what Elizabeth thought Baba wanted for the center. So again, there were two sources of communication with Baba. And, um, and Elizabeth would have her own letters and cables and ask Baba. She never did anything major without asking Baba. So uh, Baba was 
responding to Elizabeth, and then Baba Narina felt Baba was also speaking through her. So there you go. Um, and as time went on, in the, in the 1944, 1945, 1946, when all of this work was taking place, Narina became increasingly frustrated with Elizabeth's refusal to just accept, as the others did, that thought transmission were these direct orders from Baba. Now, Elizabeth, again, thought, well, thought order is part of Narina's work for Baba, and she accepted that. And she was supportive of that. You know, Elizabeth helped set up all the lectures and she in New York and all of that. So she gave her support to it. Um, but she may have seen it a little bit differently than Norena. Um, uh, Elizabeth put in a letter to me many years later uh, in a different context, but she said that uh, people found Norena's thought order lectures inspirational. And sometimes Elizabeth said they saw white light around her. Right? So that's how she saw it. <clears throat> At the same time, Elizabeth clearly did not see these thought transmissions or thought orders as direct instructions to her, Elizabeth, from Baba. Now, Elizabeth wasn't mentioned in most of them, so it avoided direct conflict in, in, in that sense. Um, when Elizabeth is mentioned, it's often as a criticism of her, the way she uses her money, the reluctance to accept a previous thought order and so forth. Um, I mean, just to give one example, at, at one point a thought order comes that Myrtle Beach is, no, is not the right place after all. And there's a bunch of reasons that Baba gives through Norena that Myrtle Beach is, let's abandon this and go to Florida and start the center there. Well, you know, Elizabeth, I mean, she, <laughs> she's, she probably said, Yes, that's all very interesting, but we're not doing that. <laughs> so, you know, it's so there were these big things that she had to draw the line, even as she accepted the daily things that uh, that people around Narina were doing. Um, so there's a letter in 1945, no, November 1945, when Norina's messages. Uh, her frustration with Elizabeth comes through. It's not a letter, excuse me, it's a, it's a thought transmission. And this is Baba speaking, uh, according to Narina. I must be sure that here in Myrtle Beach, nothing is done anymore that costs money because the wages, the exaggerated value of the material does not make it possible for you, Elizabeth, to keep pace with it. Keep in mind what I say now. The barn is ideal, and is done with devotion and love and goodwill and good taste. It is the only building I agree with. <laughs> and then Baba goes on to say through Norena, do not build in capital letters, do not build any more huts in the style you have done so far. They are not suited to this climate. I will not refuse one thing that you have tried to build and given me. I appreciate it, but you will see that the time will come that you have stone buildings erected for me. All will be done the day that I set foot on this earth in the United States of America. So one ongoing tension was what the building should be made of. And in the kind of the Indian model, Narina wanted stone, which was impractical. It was wartime. They could barely get any materials. And uh, so that's why there's so many prefabricated or or uh, catalog ordered uh, uh, huts and stuff. Even the lagoon cabin was a Air Force hut mutt, originally meant to be an Air Force hut mutt, because you couldn't go out and cut down your wood, even if you had a, a you were you were prohibited during wartime. And of course, there was no stone available as such. Uh, in fact, when it came to Baba's house, the whole controversy between them came to a head because Norena assisted it had to be stone and and some of the Mondli in india you know give we're sending these uh schemes for a huge stone fixed stone house sort of something you might see in india uh where you could go to a quarry and get these big stones and uh but elizabeth found a way to thread that needle she suggested brick 
she said, you see, we have plenty of brick here in, in South Carolina and, and it's very available and it's not so expensive. And so they went, she went with brick and, and Norena didn't much like it, but Baba approved the brick house. And so that's why you have brick, Baba's house in brick. Elizabeth did want it to be more permanent than the other structures. Um, when they decided finally to build uh, a house for Baba, since they had time, and, you know, they had built the cabin on the hill for Baba, but by the time Baba kept delaying his trip, they had time to build something more substantial. And that's when they built uh, what is now Baba's house. This all came to a head in 1946. Um, and I'm going to give you a taste of that in a letter that Norena wrote to Elizabeth while she, Norena was in Seattle. She spent some time out there during this period. Um, and she catalogs her various disagreements uh, with, with Elizabeth in this letter. Dear Tina, it is time I take the decision that I had in mind to take a long time ago. And that is to let you decide always in matters of work and money when it is the situation as it is here now in Seattle then I have to decide, of course, as I am not in the near vicinity where you stay there. I do not want you to understand what you cannot yet understand. I cannot persuade you that all what is said by Baba through me is true and right. I am sure that you dislike the discourses. I am convinced that you like to live all alone and not with me nor with Nadine. I am persuaded that this question of the house that you should have dedicated to Baba will from now on be the stone of contention, I think that's a pun, between you and my own self, and that it will no more be the same as it was before, also in the things regarding Myrtle Beach. I ask you to spend truly, verily, only for what is essential, and you go and buy more pots and clothes and things for the household. I ask you to be sure to have the capital for Baba's coming and you shrug your shoulders and ask me to stay where I am and let her be her own boss. Make it clear that we have to be free to go to India if it is necessary. And you say, well, it depends on what I have to spend. I think that it is necessary to place Nadine under some doctor's care and you think that your mental discrimination can make her understand that she is ill and can only be cured by Baba when he comes. I thought it would help you to have these people who are devoted to Baba around you. And I feel that you prefer to be all alone and make plans of your own in the way that you find it best. I am not willing to make you partner of this work that I no longer, I do any longer because you care to be your own friend and your own master. So whatever I write through you to these people, there is for, the, there is for them to follow and not for you. This is now to be the arrangement and so forth and so on. So you get, you get the picture. I am sure that we all agree that you will be kept apart and that you will make the center what you like it to be. And then she ends with thought transmission. She sort of shifts in the letter from Norena writing to thought transmission. And at the end, she says, this is what I as Baba suggest to you to write today as it is here and to say in the end. Should you like the following suggestions from me, Norena, then make no effort, made no effort to buy land, no effort to pay off land today till Baba says what to do. Think of spending the money for the wood that you have sold to keep the roads clear and to make new ones to attend to all what is possible, such as building the barn on the Circle Hill and to make the little effort to make the new huts come from Conway as you have done it in anticipation of my, to my last cable to be ready for Baba's coming. So there you have it. Um, and that's just a taste of, the, of what, what kind of went on during that period. Um, well, but despite these tensions and disagreements and occasional flair, obviously of emotion from, from Norena, um, you know, Elizabeth, <laughs> as I knew her, and I think is probably always true, was like a, an imperturbable lake, you know, and that could be annoying to other people. I mean, it's like she, nothing could ruffle her. And she had that, that, uh, 
you know, capacity to have, Baba said she had this great poise and, and Baba said spirituality is poise and she did. So she just took it, right? And just went on, right? She didn't, uh, this was not something she was going to argue about, but Narina was more fiery. You know, she was, uh, she was Italian and she was fiery and she was an actress. And so the, uh, they had very different personalities and ways of coming at these things. But in spite of these tensions, they did remain close and they continued to work together for Baba. Um, and Elizabeth, of course, uh, cared for Norena uh, when she was in ill health and uh, while simultaneously moving forward with preparing the center for Baba's coming. Uh, throughout this period, Elizabeth remained in direct contact with Baba in India, receiving and re uh, seeking and receiving his approval for all major decisions concerning the center. So this disagreement did not stop Elizabeth from just moving right ahead and, of course, checking with Baba on everything. Um, and now, finally, just a few little bit about Mayor Baba himself and thought order. This is a big topic, and I'm not going to cover it all because there's so many different parts of this part of the story, but I'd like to give you a flavor. <clears throat> this is a, a cable that Baba sent in um, 1946. Um, this cable is 46, right? About um, sanctioning the work. Yeah. Right, I'm just checking with Chris to make sure I got the date, the year right. So, uh, this Narina took to be very important, but it, it also gives you a flavor how Baba continually supported Narina, even though, well, he continually supported her. And this is this is an example of that. I sanction and bless the message of January 31st. Now, I haven't given you that message, but it, it was Narina describing her work of thought transmission. It was kind of her explanation of it. <clears throat> and so Baba says, I bless the message of January 31st regarding your work. Norena through thought order and Jean through intellectual fervor and Elizabeth through sacrificial behavior and Malcolm through full faith endeavor and Nadine through life surrender and Markey, that's Alexander Markey, through arts maneuver and few others who with love remember are all working more or less for me. May her Bob. Um, here is another example. This, this is earlier, 1944, when uh, Narina <clears throat> sent materials about the development of the center early on. <clears throat> and um, Baba cabled, this is just cabled to Narina, um, received letter of late July, and am happy to find in all letters about Myrtle Beach, everything that I personally spiritually approve of and sanction, all my love, excuse me, all my lovers should cooperate to make Myrtle Beach the spiritual abode for one and all. Meher Baba Irani. <clears throat> I think this is a particularly, uh, it's September 16th, 1944. I'm looking for water here, I got it. Um, So <clears throat> this particularly important message for many reasons, um, not the least of which is Baba very rarely um, ask all of his lovers to cooperate on, on some major project to, you know, that he was doing. And, and here he says, all my lovers should cooperate to make Myrtle Beach the spiritual abode for one and all. I feel, and I think it's clear from just this message and nothing more, no interpretation needed, that that's why the center of Myrtle Beach is the priority for me in my life uh, in terms of what I try to do to support these things that that Baba has created, um, because this is the one he really was clearly wanting everybody, all of us, 
to cooperate to to make it this what was called then the spiritual abode for one and for all <clears throat> so this is Narina in front of Yupon Dunes, where, of course, Baba recuperated after the accident and Elizabeth lived her family home and Narina lived with, with her uh, until the end of her life in 1957. So here she is. This is the pathway down to the ocean from the house. <clears throat> so in 1948, uh, Baba told Narina, who was then in, in failing health, she had an enlarged heart, among other things. Um, she had severe depression. So she, she in 1947, had, uh, had uh, shock treatments the first time. Second time she had them was in 1952, when Baba came. <clears throat> so she had it twice. Um, but he told her in 1948, uh, she went to India in 47 with, with Elizabeth to cease the public work of thought order. And by this time, her daily thought transmissions were increasingly rare. And attention to thought order messages among Baba's followers, including those once devoted to the practice, gradually faded away. And even the publication of fragments and messages in the late 1940s appeared to do little to revive interest in, in thought transmission. Um, and so the question is why this curtain of silence suddenly over something that was of daily importance to Mayor Baba's family in, a, in, in the United States throughout the 1940s and, uh, and directed their lives pretty much. Um, why did it just sort of go away? Well, I, I'm not going to say, you know, definitively that I know, but I think it's obvious that <clears throat> her deteriorating mental and physical health contributed to that. And um, she just had to leave the stage, as it were. <clears throat> and of course, it was unlike today when we are, I think, better as a society in understanding the illness of depression <clears throat> and um, then it was unspeakable, pretty much, you know, it just wasn't something that one talked about. And, um, and it was perhaps somewhat of an embarrassment, or maybe more than somewhat. And the shock treatments, uh, the hospitalizations, you know, were, that was not an era where you where one acknowledged those things. Um, she, Norena did recover enough to travel with Elizabeth to be with Baba in 1947 and 19, uh, through 19, 1947, 1948, I guess until early 49. Um, she did cease the work of thought transmission, uh, except for a small number of personal messages she recorded in her journals, which Baba said she could do. Even interestingly enough, even while staying with Baba in India, she received thought transmission and recorded them in her journals. So this was not something she just did when she was away from Baba physically. She actually did it when she was in his proximity. And just as a footnote, Narina actually received thought transmissions before she met Meher Baba. So we have a journal from 1927 of her thought transmissions. I wasn't understood as being from Meher Baba, obviously, but this was a lifelong way she had of inner communication with the divine. This was not something that even came along just when she met Baba, if, if you follow. So, um, so that's, that's an interesting piece of the story. Um, so again, she was hospitalized, as I mentioned, in 1952, and then lived at Yupon Dunes in a very quiet and secluded way until her death in 19. 57. And by that time, her work of thought order had been um, pretty much forgotten. Um, you know, and it was somewhat difficult to know what to say about it. So I grew up in a period where, of course, Narina was no longer there. Narina and my mother, 
crossed paths, as it were, or, you know, when Norena died, my mother came into the picture on, 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 on the, of the day of her funeral. So it was just immediate, you know, from Norena to Jane in, 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 uh, in Elizabeth's life. And growing up with Elizabeth and Kitty back then, Norena was rarely mentioned. And if it was, it was, uh, it was very sweet, but it was not much, you know, you didn't, one didn't hear much. And then from some other people, Margaret Crass would tell funny stories, you know, like that. And in India, you'd hear some funny things in the seventies. Um, so Norena was mentioned, but this vast work of hers where she was the principal person speaking for Baba throughout the United States for years. She was how people heard about Mayor Baba. Many of the people who came to the center in 1952 to meet Baba were at her lectures. And, you know, she was the key disciple in the West, uh, along with Elizabeth. She and Elizabeth were the only two allowed to be in touch with Baba during the new life in the West, and so on and so on. And then by the time I come along in the late 50s, early 60s, she disappears. And of course, it, it, it is an embarrassment, if you will, or difficult to know what to say. And I don't know what, and Elizabeth was very circumspect and private anyway. Um, so that's, uh, so that's why it disappeared. Um, this is a picture of them together with Bob in India in the late 1940s, Norena and Elizabeth. <clears throat> I mean, so what can we say here at the end about the significance of the thought order work uh, in the United States, especially at the center? And, I, and again, I'm not going to make any grand conclusions or or um, conclusions because I don't know, only Baba knows. But I think, uh, I mean, uh, people have expressed a variety of perspectives on this th uh, throughout the, you know, the Baba's time and, and uh, even since Baba's physical time. Um, it hasn't been much discussed, but um, I think, probably in the Mayor Baba community, if it is discussed or thought about, I think generally one can agree across all our different perspectives about it, that Baba used it. I mean, to state the obvious, this is how Baba worked. Uh, this was his way of working, whatever else you think of it. Uh, was it directly word from word from Baba through Narina? Well, um, some didn't think so, others did. Jean Adriel complained to Baba that she was getting orders from Baba through Narina and she didn't agree with it. And Baba wrote back and supported Narina, but said, but you follow your conscience. See, so Baba supported her, but he also supported those who didn't take it as being directly from him. And meanwhile, he got the center built. And it's really hard to imagine somehow now that you know you sort of have years of looking back 70 or so years how would they have done it how would they have come here knowing no one and nothing uh these two women and uh built the center out of basically wilderness uh who would have helped them who would have who would have been so inspired to do it with love in the way that baba's work has to be done there were you know not that many people. And Norena served as the inspiration, not herself, but her conveying of Baba through her messages and her tr thought transmissions, her, her lectures, were the way in which people were inspired and touched and transformed to give their lives to Baba and, and to this work. Even if later they did, like conversations I had with Darwin many years later, later they thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe we took it in a way we, you know, wouldn't now take it, right? It doesn't matter. At the time, that's what motivated people. 
And so Baba used it, in other words, to his to his uh, to build his center. And Narina's work in building the center was therefore essential, right? I mean, Elizabeth was great at the practical part, and you know the the buying of buildings and so hiring contractors. She was very good at that. But Norina was great at the beautiful part, the heart part, the putting your whole being into it. Because you see, it wasn't just hire some people, come and cut down trees. It was doing it with love, creating the paths with a certain way and a certain love, repeating his name, meditating, remembering him, creating the atmosphere. All of that flowed from Norina's work of thought transmission and thought order. And the center, I don't see how it could possibly have come into being without either of these women with their two very different contributions and both essential. It wasn't like Elizabeth did all the, the you know important stuff and Arena just did this little thought transmission. No, the thought transmission was extremely central to the daily work of creating uh, the center with a certain atmosphere and a certain in a certain love. So I'm going to end with something Norena said about her thought transmission, which I think is very beautiful. Um, and perhaps says it all, at least from her experience. It is Meher Baba, she says, the living incarnation of truth who has spoken through me. In myself, I am nothing. But he has, in his grace, chosen me as a vehicle to send out the thought order of the truth in various messages to the world. Having given, having, having given them to the world, which needs them so badly, I have finished my duty. Let the world receive these words of power with joy. Princess Marina Machiavelli. J. Bala. J. Papa Charles. Wow. How do I stop screen sharing? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a little. There's a stop. Yeah, okay. There it is. <laughs> did it stop? <laughs> yeah, it did. Okay, yeah. good. That was just fantastic. What a, what a new perspective that you've put for us today. Thank you so much. I'm sure there are some people that might have some comments or questions. So I'm going to just ask if anybody would like to raise a hand. Let us know that you have something you want to add or say or or questions for Charles Christopher. I would like to get the zoom screen back, but I don't know how to do oh, that. Oh, don't you have it? No, I don't. I, I uh, uh, hear you. But um, uh, I think I'm getting it now. Participants can now see your application. I'm trying to get, yes, there we go. Okay, here I am. <laughs> there I am. All right. So, okay, well, I think we have a little time for questions and uh, right. right here in case, in case I don't know what the... Well, uh, Rosalie, of course, has a question or a comment. Go ahead, Rosalie. Comment, J. Baba. Um, <laughs> Frank Eaton told me one time that uh, Narina is the only one that could uh, cause Elizabeth to cry. <laughs> I thought that was important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she could be unruffled, but yeah. You're going? No. Yeah, no, she could be unruffled, but she. Um... Yes, I think and probably Jane could too. <laughs> Those two people. <laughs> uh, no. Um, and and anything to do with a dog, probably those three things. <laughs> anything to do with an animal would cause her maybe to cry. Someone asked, uh, Elizabeth, did you ask in the uh, uh, chat, I see that the Upazni Maharaj tree is still at the center. You, I mean, the, the, there are some of the folks there, the workers and so forth, think they have identified what it could be because it looks so much like the picture. And um, and I 
think it's near where the farm shed is, as I recall. Yeah, I think I Somebody, saw it. Yeah. I think I saw it when I was at the center for 11 days recently, because I tend to notice old gnarly trees, because I'm a bird watcher as well. And um, I was just trying to figure out where did I see that? And I pre I'm pretty sure I did, like the steps that go down to the lagoon as you're coming around the edge of the farm shed. I don't know. I would love to know if I could have passed it and if it happened to be the, you know, a, a tree. I, I would have noticed that tree. I th it looks familiar to me. That's all I'm saying. And I was curious precisely where it is. I'm not sure we can we can exactly. defend this, but it does look like it. Mm -hmm. it does look like it. Judy, what about you? Then we'll go to Betty. Judy? Good morning. Thank morning. you. Well, here it's morning still um, on the West Coast. Uh, thank you, Charles, for such an insightful um, sharing. Um, you mentioned that, uh, so I'm here in Seattle, and, um, and you mentioned that Norena was in Seattle um, during the 40s. Uh, I didn't quite catch the, the years. Can you say more about what she was doing here? And I'm wondering if she might have been staying with um, Mildred Kyle, um, and if you know very much about Mildred Kyle's connection with, um, with Baba, um, and also Warren Healy, who was here in, uh, around those days, he, he ended up publishing all the Awakener magazines when they came out in, the, in 53. Yes, he did the uh, early pamphlets also. Um, right, so right no a lot of so Norena was in, in charge of all that, um, as I would put it. She, you know, all the kind of publication stuff, and she was kind of the person who directed that to a certain extent. I mean, some people went off the reservation and did their own, like uh, Alexander Markey, I think, did a publication that she didn't like that much. Um, Jim's. <laughs> She, she didn't think it was it was it was uh, accurate. So she, you know, so there was disagreements, but basically, Norena was in charge of of those things, and so she did go to Seattle periodically uh, to see people there. There's a whole group of people, and Mildred, obviously, one of them. Mildred also came over to the center and and was there, even though by that time, you know, she's quite elderly, um, but she. Uh, you know, was a key person in Norena's circle. And we have a manuscript actually of thought transmissions that Mildred Kyle compiled that have not been published. But in that manuscript, um, it is clear that Norena corrected it, edited it for publication. It just never got published. And now we need to figure out when we can do that. But it's all bound and it's like a book, but it's... Uh, and it, but it has the markings in it of corrections from from Norena, fortunately. So I think it's pretty much ready to go. So yeah, I mean, uh, she gave lectures there and meetings. I so I, I we have various things in correspondence that could could fill in a little more detail that I can't call from the top of my head. But yeah, she 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 was Seattle was an important place for her. Yeah. Um, do you know if she gave thought transmissions here, like publicly, or or even privately to the Baba-oriented people? I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking, do we know that she gave public lecture in Seattle? I don't think we have any record of that. We don't have any cards of, or posters for that. She was giving thought transmission every day. So undoubtedly, just about every day. So undoubtedly, she gave thought transmission there, but I don't, and probably to the people that she was with. Um, but I don't think we have any record of a 
a public lecture in Seattle, but I'll look and be on the uh, lookout for it. I haven't seen one that we can we can think of. Um, one of our members some years ago did a deep dive into Mildred Kyle, and I um, recently uh, uh, received his work. I'll I'll send that to you. Um, okay. In in some form, um, and in case it's helpful for anything with with your work. Well, thank you. Appreciate that very much, Judy. Sure. Thanks again. Sure. Always, always wonderful to to hear from you. Thanks, Betty. Hello, Charles. Hello. Yes, I agree. This has just been great. It's so nice to get this the the, the all this deep look into the details of Baba's people. I was curious about Norina. You know, she's a princess. She's she she had this unique charge of uh, 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 involving her brain, I guess you'd say her. And I wondered if Baba um, treated her more gently, if he, if he didn't, uh, you know, sometimes he was pretty, well, I won't say harsh, but he uh, sees that people got humiliated <laughs> regularly around him. I wondered if she was exempt for, from some of that because of well, that's a, that's a very interesting question. I think uh, we have one exchange where Baba said uh, not to upset her. Uh, what was the context? Do you remember? Uh, not to upset Narina because she, you know, would not take it well. I mean, she was volatile in that sense, a dramatic personality, apparently. Um, could you say that again? Yes. Oh yeah, he told Jean Adriel to not uh, challenge her and just to accept things. And she, Jean Adriel, didn't have to follow that. She could follow her conscience, but she was not to, you know, get into a, a challenging, uh, she, you know, role with with Norina. Baba didn't like that with Norina to do to. I mean, clearly, Baba steered people away from from challenging her, even though they may have felt strongly. Um, and Darwin's uh, not Darwin in Duncan's diaries, he records that one day uh, Margaret and Kitty came to him and told this is a little second hand, you see, but uh, told Duncan they had just come from Baba and Norina had come up. And uh, Baba said to them, um, when they asked about this work, you know, there was a lot of skepticism, you know, Margaret and others about Norina. And you could tell later years, just to say parenthetically, Margaret had a lot of skepticism about Norina, even though she wrote beautiful letters on Baba's behalf to Norina. So she loved Norina, but skepticism about this thing, thought transmission. Um, but uh, so they brought it up with Baba apparently. Anyway, they told Dr. Duncan that Baba said, this is not my, this is not my way of working, but this nevertheless does my work. Um, so that gives you kind of a, an idea. This is not the way Baba would do it necessarily as Mayor Baba, you know, his, his ways are pretty much consistent and, and we know them. Um, but this is the way he worked through her, just like he works through so many. Um, and uh, also just to, to remember, Narina was older than Baba. And she, Baba called her his mother, <clears throat> his Western mother. And so there was a deference and it, it annoyed others, um, including in India, that she was sort of taking Baba by the elbow as it were, and always kind of assuming a place of closeness. Um, and then of course, Baba put her in charge of things because she was a kind of in charge person. And a lot of people didn't like that very much. And of course, that's typical of Baba. He always puts people in charge that 
that may you know rub people the wrong way or not always but he does um so there's all of that going on with her she was a big personality she was a strong personality you know she was a very loving person obviously and um and thousand percent devoted to baba but she was you know she was a film star a stage star she you know she was used to being the center of things and uh and that was hard for some people let's just let's just put it that way <laughs> you know let's just put it that way uh let's see who has not had a chance let's see is this am i doing this in the right order elizabeth you're up i think because i see that little hand in the air and then we'll go to jonathan and wendy um, well, first, I want to say thank you. I forgot to say that before my last comment. This has been wonderful, and I love all the new information. So I'll try to figure out how to say this question. Uh, the simple part is, um, do we have any information about her thought transmissions prior to meeting Baba? And if they had any, um, it was, was it any kind of um, foreshadowing, so to speak, in her life of Baba coming into it? such that once he came into her life, she knew that this was the same source. So that's the first question. And the second question has to do with thought transmission itself and also these um, seeming, seeming conflicts bet uh, between others, especially Elizabeth and Norena, with regard to thought transmissions that might not either make sense or, um, in other words, that Elizabeth or others might have disagreed with. And this, the question is a little more than that because it's, you know, Normina was saying this comes from Baba, that this is from the intuitive, you know, the thought transmissions and the order. And if we're going into the age of intuition, um, I'm wondering if when others felt this same, this resistance to whatever that was, that it was their own intuition, their I am God state within responding. And if you think about in God speaks, um, you know, God is the I am in every single one. You know, the God state in man and each person is the same one. And so I'm wondering if one reason Baba may not have uh, said much about it is because um, it, it was an expression of himself in each one that came out in each individual uh, infinitude of finiteness ways. Anyway, I hope you can understand. No, what I, I, think, I, think, I think that's a very perceptive comment. And, um, you know, I'm not sure what wisdom I have, except to say that what you're saying, I think, is to me deeply true and that is baba speaks within everyone and baba wants us to follow our conscience he said that um no matter what even if it meant not pleasing him we should follow our conscience baba has said that a number of times and so the conscience is is a, is a way of talking about that inner voice that place in which we hear god speak and we are we have that capacity, Baba says, in every human being to hear our true self speak. And it's not always right or, you know, perfect because we are ignorant. We live in ignorance. But that's where he wants us to, to cultivate hearing that voice. Um, the difference with Narina, I think, and just all of us listening and trying to follow our conscience is that it, it's a very different leap when you follow your conscience and think it other people should too. <laughs> that, that, that raises the stake, you know what I'm saying? And so that's another order of, of giving out your intuition about Baba. Now you one can suggest to people that this is what you feel Baba wants, but you know, Elizabeth was very much a different way of speaking about it. If 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 Baba was guiding her, she would say, something like, it came to me last night, such and such. And the power of it was, it was so clear and practical and real that you kind of knew it was from Baba, but she never said that. 
She never said that I can remember, you know, Baba wants you or Baba spoken to me to say to you. So she was just on the other end of the spectrum with it. But so that's why no Baba working through Norina caused so much upheaval in some people uh, and has left us with this very interesting legacy of Baba using this work. And Norina was a conscious of how much this might be upsetting because a lot of the thought transmissions she said, I'm the only one Baba wants to do this. Don't you do it. <laughs> this is not the age of intuition doesn't mean we're all going to go around giving messages for everybody else to follow instructions in their lives. And quite the contrary, the age of intuition will be that we no longer need that as much, right? We don't need somebody telling us what to do because we will have a more direct awareness of, of the true self or Baba or God or whatever you want to say guiding us. And that in that age, it'll be much more natural for more people to have that awareness. But of course, that doesn't mean that everyone is a pope unto themselves. Um, and so Narina had a very unique role in that sense. And um, did she have into any kind of indication in her early 1927 journals? Uh, not, not that I, you know, I have not read them. They're not easy to read because they're in her handwriting, which is almost indecipherable. But it is more it's it's very abstract and, and there's not much concrete, but I suppose if I give it more thought and time, I will have a better answer about what may be in there or not. It was just her way of communicating with, with God within. And um, she didn't put them out there for other people to follow in those early days that I know of, but it was just her natural way of communicating with the divine. It was that inner she heard God's voice within her and she put it down on paper. Um, she also experienced when she was playing the miracle, the, mm. the mother of Christ um, came to her and transformed her life. So that was her meeting with Baba, if you will, before she met Baba physically. It was the mother. The mother uh, entered her. She became the mother. Because, you know, she played the statue of the Virgin Mary, as you know, and she, was in, you could, she couldn't move an inch or flick an eyelid for much of the whole drama, right? So it was a very challenge. She was a statue. She played it, for, for, and then she comes to life. But the point being, when she was the, the statue of the Mother Mary, she was so focused that she experienced the Mother Mary and in a sense became her. So that was that was the most important turning point in her spiritual life um, before meeting Baba physically. And it's interesting because it was the mother and she became the mother in Baba's circle. She, she played the role of the mother. At Thank you for shedding light on that. Western mother. Jonathan. Jay Baba Charles. Well, let me turn my slides uh, on. I had a two part question. One was uh, in reading the gift in the introduction, first time I read that, I must say my reaction was my gosh, what does it take to become God realized in all the roles she had played in prior advents? Of, uh, and I haven't read it recently, but it seemed like he was Rada's sister, maybe, or and Joseph. And I was wondering, Loris, what your reaction was to those quote unquote credentials um, when you wrote that introduction. And then the second thing was uh, in terms of <clears throat> she she had those thought transmissions and but it was whether it was during the Nasik period in the ashram there, um, she continued to cultivate her relationship with Baba. Baba was preparing them, the women in particular. And then with the Blue Bus tour in 38, and they were asked, Narina and Elizabeth were asked to publish the Mayor Baba journal. And they said, well, we could do it, Baba, but 
you know, you've got to put some, nobody will read unless you put something in. And so, as I understand it, the discourses uh, first appeared in the Mayor Baba Journal, along with these messages of Narina that involved from narratives into pretty quickly into the voice and a discussion of what this thought transmission uh, was and and then then into this mystical language and so there was that those talks in that period um leading to up to her coming to america and then giving those talks initially publicly and then there was this period when it seems to me very different when she was giving instructions to people personally or in groups so I, I just, on all those general subjects that I'm bringing up, you're, I'd appreciate your comments. Sure, thank you, Jonathan. I mean, just to say, yes, it was overwhelming to see all the different references, Baba. You're on mute. mute. You're on mute. Am I? I took myself off. Am I no, still? No, he, he, we can hear him fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you hear me, Jonathan? Yes. Well, mm -hmm. that was Jonathan. Oh, okay. So, um, Yes, Baba said a lot of these things about different people. You know, you were this and you were that. Who knows? Baba, you know, how he speaks and why he says, you know, but it is true that it, it's an extraordinary uh, list for her. St. Joseph, the father of, of Jesus, and so, many, so much else. Um, what to make, but Baba certainly did that. And you know how it how it was with Baba, making them feel that deep connection that he had with them over over lifetimes and lifetimes, and that was one way of speaking about it. And uh, and certainly she, you know, she was very touched and very moved to to be that. And um, I will only say about you know how much does it take to be God real. To me, this is my personal view. If you if you, one is very fortunate, Baba will hold off on that so you can come and serve him again and again in different roles. That would be my vote for myself if I had the choice. Uh, I would like to be around to be with him again, again and again and again. And apparently, there are some members of the circle who have been with him many, many times. About the other, I think. <clears throat> um, so. The Mayor Baba journals, I don't think, have thought transmission that I can remember, but they have articles by Narina. And in that period, she also gave talks about Baba in different parts of India. She was kind of the one of the go-to speakers. She and uh, Nadine also would give talks. And of course, uh, Baba's, uh, some of his disciples would give talks. But she was, she was, one of the faces of, of talking about Baba in India. Um, the thought transmission lectures of Baba speaking through her, I think don't start until she gets to the United States. You know, if I could be wrong, neither one of neither one of us can think of an example of that happening until she gets to the United States. That's when she takes the turn after that 1941 message of Baba she actually began to turn and realize that this was her work that Baba wanted her to do of this thought transmission. And she had a very specific physiological explanation for it involving the, the penile gland, which I can't get all into right here, but she had a physiological component to, to how that happened. So it was a very literal based in her body thing that she had this capacity to do, to do this work. Um, so yeah, so that the, 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 uh, that became her way of working for Baba from that time until, um, until Baba had her stop doing that in 1948. Does that, did that speak to everything you asked about Jonathan? I hope so. Yeah, except that, um, it, in terms of the, the articles, the first few were heavily narrative. The first one, I think, was in December of 1938. Yeah. And it seemed that Baba was a lot of the thought transmissions that, that she was doing had to 
we're in the context of the war and the buildup of the war. So she gave quite a number of uh, articles which were in the form of messages, including one called The Voice, which actually described the mechanics of The Voice and the relationship with Baba well before 1941, maybe as early as 1939. I can't say what the date was. But from, from th December of 38 up until 41, she was, those articles included thought what she described as thought transmissions, and they were printed as such as the articles. Um, and then when she came, as I understand, when Baba gave them instructions to find a center, there's a quote, and I can't cite it, but where Baba said, he, he gave a talk about asking her to find me personally, you have found me personally, and that voice you that you hear within yourself is my voice. That that came up sometime during that period then. But but there were my the point is that there were printed articles that were described as thought transmissions that were published in the Mayor Baba journals, including one specifically called The Voice, which described yeah, well, I'll take another look. I mean, we neither Christopher or I uh think of those as thought transmissions, but we'll we'll take another look because that's interesting. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Right. She, yeah, I mean, our understanding is that, that you know, because Baba could not come to the United States, uh, she thought that the thought transmission was a necessary way of him speaking uh, in this country. But um, in those articles, I don't think we've ever thought of as being from her perspective as being Baba speaking through her the way he did when she, so the, the thought transmission is directly Baba speaking word for word when he's not physically, when he's not physically yeah, uh, there. And um, and that's what we, what we call thought order or thought transmission. But, you know, it may be a matter of words, but, uh, but that's, that's of a different order than her articles and her lectures that she gave before she came back to America, but uh, but I'm happy to 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 have that perspective and that input so that we can go back and. Yeah, I appreciate you taking a look at it. Cause there, there, one other thing that, um, in that regard of when she came here, um, I recall that in the beginning of fragment, a copy of the fragments of the, the diary that she wrote, she gave to Elizabeth. And she referred the notation, I can't quote it, but she said that uh, she referred to when Baba went into silence on August 1st of 1941, saying that he was going to break his silence inwardly and speak. Yeah, I, I, I actually quoted that this morning. Yeah, sorry. I, I got here late because of so the I did, I did I did read that that inscription out and she she. Uh -huh quotes the 1941 message uh, all those years later and says, this, right. this book will make it clear. I will yeah, I will speak yeah. to myself, to myself. And this book yeah. makes it clear, yeah. So, so that's- anyway, that, um, But anyway, yeah, if you would look at those uh, from that perspective, because it, it is, um, and Scott McCaig has done a lot of research in terms of that. I mean, I think he's in communication with you in terms of supporting. But I, I, it's it seems to be, for whatever reason, that it got forgotten for a number of years. It seems to be a, experientially a fertile source uh, for exploration. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to just take a couple more because I am supposed to be in a legal affairs committee meeting for the center right now. <laughs> so Charles, Charles I'm, leaving, but I'm going to, I, I don't want to leave people hanging here. So Wendy, you've, you've been waiting and I, I don't want to. Uh, Charles, I, I want to follow up for just a moment with what uh, Jonathan was saying. Have you had a chance to talk with Scott McCaig about the work he's doing on, on Norena's messages? Yes, I, I've spoken with Scott. So these messages Baba says specifically are in his mystical language. They're a different category 
than the thought transmissions. And as Jonathan rightly said, they started in December of 38, but during the period of of July um, of 1940, for quite a period, she was giving daily um, transmissions in these mystical languages as the Blitz was happening in London and so forth um, during, during the war. And they're deeply profound. They're a whole other level of inner depth than even the thought transmissions. And, and Scott, um, you know, as Jonathan said, most of them are being, uh, several of them were published in the Bear Baba journals, but there's a number of others that are, uh, that Scott discovered in Adike Irani's files that were written, but have not, never were published. Um, so anyway, there it's, I just want to say how significant personally they are for my life. Um, they, Baba is saying so specifically why he came as Avatar, what he's doing in this advent. They are utterly profound. So you, you and, and Christopher must um, have a chance to delve deeply into them because they're utterly priceless and powerful. Um, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. I there, And I think it's just a matter of, uh, uh, and I'm familiar with them. They, you know, I, I obviously over the years we've read them, but, um, you know, uh, they are a different kind of thing. And, and, and I'm sure some people will find these more wonderful and other people will find the thought transmissions more wonderful. So it's all a matter of, of how you respond but they are not thought order or thought transmission so that's that's all i'm saying right and thought i order, agree thought, thought order and thought transmission is something completely different and and arena, arena defines that very clearly so um you know that and that doesn't make any difference i mean this could be more profound or less profound but narina thought she was giving something very specifically word for word from baba in india through her and that's that's takes it to a particular level of of uh, of of work so anyway that but i'm happy to to go back and look at these and renew myself with these and yeah what the voice yeah christopher's showing me the voice and you know yes these are certainly inspired by baba but they're not she thought she thought the voice of yeah she she describes she it a thought transition between 41 as her delivering by the message right she she yeah, thought transmission is not that she was inspired or she's hearing Baba's voice and so forth. Thought transmission was Baba giving word for word a message through her. And she didn't think she had anything to do with it. And it wasn't her. She didn't use quotation marks. And she didn't use quotation marks in thought transmission. So there's a very different kind of communication. I'm not saying it's better or more beautiful or less beautiful. I mean, that's a matter of personal response, but it's not the body of work that that she considered to be her her thought transmission. Um, okay, one more, Wendy. You were waiting patiently, and then I'm going to jump off to my meeting. It's a very quick question. First of all, thank you, Jay Baba Charles. Um, the question is: Did Narina ever come into Canada? And if she did, was it? in the Toronto area, like the Toronto train station, or was it in BC, or did that ever happen? Um, I'm pausing because and I, the only thing I can think of is when Baba departed uh, from Vancouver, and I'm trying to recall, Nadine was not there because Baba sent her a cable to West Hollywood where she was from the from Vancouver and he got on that boat the um called the whatever it was princess something boat I forget the, the name of it. what year would that be sorry Charles what so year that, uh, that was 19 uh 30 35 35 1935 and and Baba uh 
sailed from there to, I guess, Hawaii was the next place. And um, whether Norena was there to see him off, I'd have to check who was there. Because there is a picture of them all on the boat with Baba there in Vancouver. And I think Norena is in that photograph. So we, you know, I just don't have that at my fingertips, but yeah, I can find that out if she was there. Just the Canadian, I was just curious. <laughs> thank and you. Baba is certainly there. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Jay Baba, thank you. Jay Baba. Oh. Thank you, Charles. Well, thank you, everyone. It's been wonderful being with you and sharing these. And uh, there's so much more about her. So maybe we'll do some more of these. <laughs> Great. That'd yeah. be great. We'll be yeah. in touch. Jay Bob, everybody. Jay Bob, have a great meeting. Jay Bob, Charles. Jay Bob, Charles, thank you. Jay Bob, Charles, thank you. Thank you, Jay Bob. Thank you, Charles.